What's up everyone, it's DV. I am in Roblox Islands and I'm gonna show you some cool stuff today. I'm gonna show you how to auto farm your own wood. That's right. With everything really needing wood these days, I think you're gonna need to learn how to farm your own wood because it's gonna get more and more expensive and more painful. Every single time you wanna make something, you're gonna be like, dude, now I need more birch wood. Dude, now I need more pine or I need maple or I need whatever it is. It's getting kind of out of control. Let me tell you, it's getting out of control when you're having to go pay someone a thousand per piece of wood because that is crazy having to pay a thousand for each of these over overpay overpay but you're going to end up having to do it because no one really likes to farm these so i've created an auto farm for you i'm going to show you how to use this and how to build it in a minute and then at the same time i'm going to show you how i'm doing my new berry auto farm which is a little added bonus in the video so i'm going to show you how i do that but before i begin be sure to hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you are new and i know you want to see the wall of fireflies again i'm actually make it bigger should i make it just twice as much now I'd, I'd, I probably shouldn't. So one of the things you're gonna need, you're gonna need the obby start flags. You're gonna need at least a couple of these. I would say two is good enough. I like this. I like to stock up on these. I think it's worth it. I've got like eight here, but I like to use them for everything. So whenever you're building and stuff, so I, I've got one at the top of here. So if I ever wanna go up there and I jump off or fall off, I, it just respawns me back up there. So I don't really use them for obbies. I use them for utility because I think they're super helpful to have. But you can see here, I've actually got one right here. And so how this works, I'm just gonna give you like the high, the high high level part first is you're going to go here. You're going to replace that. You're going to chop that down. You're going to go all the way to the end, right? And this is fully automated. So the way I automate mine is I use a tool called Tiny Task. Tiny Task records all of your actions, including the timing of your actions, which is really, really nice. So if you want to be able to repeat actions over and over and over, and you can set it on continuous loop and then you could just repeat it. Now, I am not going to go and create a tutorial on how to use Tiny Task. That is just one of the many macros that I like to use. I also use Macro Creator and you can use Macro Creator to do this as well. The one piece of advice is to not move your mouse whenever you're recording because mouse pointers are always gonna be different depending on what you're doing and they're always gonna be issues. The other thing I can tell you is you can also active farm this way as well. So if you're on mobile or something, this should still work for you just fine. You just won't be able to auto it. But this video is all about autoing on PC. But if you're on mobile, you could just actively grind this way so you don't have to move. I know it's painful to move on mobile. So this is, this is a pretty mobile friendly approach. So the way I set this up is I've got this little start area, right? And the number here doesn't really matter. Matter. The number here doesn't matter, but what does matter is how this is set up. So you can see here, I've got this block here just off an angle, and then I've got this block that stops this. And the reason why I wanted to stop this is so I can actually farm this. And then when I'm ready to go, all you got to do is push yourself back down here and let go. And then it's going to do the same. And all it does is repeat that over and over and over. One thing you're going to notice is the big gap between here and the trees vary in width. So what I've observed is the maximum amount of space required between these two blocks is about 12 blocks. So so counting the empty space here through there is 12. And I actually measured that inside my other field. So I created a giant runway of trees. And what I did was I looked for the longest distance required for these things to spawn. Cause I don't want to have a scenario where a tree isn't spawning because of collision. The trees will not spawn if there's any way for them to collide with another tree. They just, they will, they will not spawn. I think they should, but they don't. That's just how the game is set up. Now that is for regular saplings. What I have noticed is that pines and some other trees actually can get close closer to each other. You can see like these, these are really narrow trees that birch are. So if you're going to just do like a particular type of wood, you might be able to make a different farm for each tree type. Like technically I probably could have fit another tree right here for birch, but we're, we're, we're just really focusing on wood here. So I have birch here. I'm going to go and show you what I can do without birch. So here's the process that I use. I like to make sure in my hot bar, number one is my pickaxe. Number two is going to be my grass. And number three is going to be my sapling, right? So that's going to be my sapling. Now your sapling number three slots going to be whatever you want. So I've actually already created a script that does this. So all I have to do is if I want to change the wood types, I just change out the sapling. So if, maybe if I have a bunch of uh, maple, I don't have a lot of maple with me right now, but say I did, then I would just change the sapling to maple. And that way, whenever I'm automating this, um, I could just pause it, sw switch out the wood type or the tree type, and then just resume it. And what it'll do is it'll farm all these birch and then it'll replace the next run will replace it with maple or whatever I choose. If I don't want, maybe I want hickory, maybe I want some other tree. And I would actually definitely recommend start farming hickory now because you know that's coming. We already know that's going to be coming. Maple and birch are the two that they've been pushing a lot lately. I haven't seen a whole lot of pine. They haven't really done a whole lot of pine, but they are, I'm assuming, I don't know this, I don't have any clues on this, but because they did hickory recently, they're most likely going to use hickory on something. So I would start farming hickory if you could. One thing I want to note is this does not produce a crazy amount of wood. It's just, it's, it is nonstop. So you're going to be making some pretty good wood overnight. If you want to do a ton, and 
unfortunately it's going to need some active grind because what you're going to do is you're going to actually have a tree farm that's really close together that's something like this and you're going to stand in the middle of it and you're just going to use maybe a fast pick or something and just take it all out or you could break the bottom problem is the way trees especially close uh, up like this they they randomly spawn and when they're ready and so it's really hard to fast farm those but you can you can farm about a thousand pretty quickly if you really if you were in a real bind it's about i think you could do it for about 20 minutes or so maybe 30 minutes you can get about a thousand trees um and that's pretty good right but overnight if you're getting still about five thousand overnight why do the active work when you could just overnight it and so that's what this is for so i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of show you how i built this right now so the way i did it was i actually set up a uh, glass blocks here and then i've got a bunch of conveyors i don't know yeah so i've got 120 conveyors here so the way i did it was i basically set up something like this right and then at some point we need to block it so let's go ahead and get some glass here so at, at about right here we're gonna block it and you're gonna do a double because otherwise if you don't double up then your character is just gonna kind of roll right into it so you're stopped right here right and then one block over so this is where you're at one block to the left you're gonna put a dirt block and then you're gonna plant the tree and then this is the process so whenever you run into this we're going to break this and then we're gonna put the block down we're gonna replant the tree break it block down you get what I'm saying so you're gonna be taking out the tree replanting the block planting the tree so it's a three-step sequence and you can see how fast you can get after a while it's it's really fast so we're gonna be doing that in the strip here and so the way I do this though is okay so right here we got the tree so what I do is I actually count this block and I go 14 across so this would be one this would be two three four so I just I actually use glass just because it's easier so this is considered one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then we have the 14 will be the grass block. And this is your next tree. This is your next sapling. And so this is for the big tree. Some people say it's 10 across from the next tree, but they actually change that. It's actually 14 across from, so if this is like 12, it's basically 12 in between, right? 12 blocks in between. But if you were gonna count the actual blocks themselves, it'd be 14 total blocks being used. And then what you're gonna do here is you're going to put another passage of conveyors right here, just two of those. And then behind them, you're gonna make sure you have a wall here so you can run into it. So that way, when you're backing up, you smash right into that. You want to push really hard onto that. That way, there's no way for the macro to mess up. And then what you're going to do here is we need a, a left turn. So there's going to be a left turn and then a right turn. So we need to grab those. So there's our left turn and here's our right, right turn. So that's our left and here's our right and then our straights. And we're going to do the same thing. So basically, you have a pattern here. You're just basically going to rebuild this next. So when you get over here, your blocks, see how this is already grown. But you're going to go all the way over there and then then you'll have a block here. This is where the, gl the glass is gonna be. So that's your glass right there, right? And then you're gonna do the same thing. And that's that's how you build it. Again, it's not that many. You only need uh, about two conveyors here. This does use up a lot of conveyors, but the way I set this up is I've, I've also timed it. So this is actually perfectly sized, by the way. So I timed this against 80 second respawn times for the trees. So every sapling is gonna take about 80 seconds to respawn. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, uh, saplings here or trees and I've counted based on the timing that I've paused so I've actually recorded just right so that I wouldn't have any issues and then what happens is at the back here you're gonna drop off and as long as your your checkpoint is running you the next time you drop off you're gonna spawn like this again so this is how you're gonna farm you're gonna stop here again you're gonna want to like angle your camera just right so when you're doing this you want to make sure it's angled just right so it's basically see this this line here the conveyor should be kind of straight across it shouldn't be like this it shouldn't be like that it should be pretty much even like that and then what I like to do is see the glass blocks the very top of the glass blocks I like to kind of angle those so they're just kind of aligned to the uh, silver part the middle part of the conveyor um, if you do this then you're gonna have issues with the camera see how things are like kind of buttoned up like the there could there could be collision for the camera and we, we don't want that and let me go ahead and disable this because it's kind of interfering you're not gonna have anything behind you but let's go ahead and show you right here okay so that's a good spot and what i like to do as soon as the camera is in a good spot i'd like to just jump off again and make sure this is in good shape so i am in a good position and then what i do is you could make it so you just break the block right so you could just make it so you just break that the problem i had was sometimes it was just out of alignment and sometimes it would place the block right here or you wouldn't be able to get things it, it just got a little um especially with my body movement because we're on a uh, conveyor see how the camera actually does move a little bit each um, pace sometimes you'd actually accidentally hit the 
this and it just causes too many issues. So what I've decided to do is always hit the tree no matter what. So we're gonna go and start with that. And the way I do it though, is I don't start with the, the pickaxe enabled as part of my recording. I actually keep it disabled. So I'm usually, I usually have a sapling in my hand and then I, and I start the recording now and then I wait five seconds and then I switch to this and then I break and then I break that and then I switch and then I place the block, plant the sapling and then I push myself against this and let go. And then we're, as soon as we get to the end, we're gonna repeat the process. And at this point I can switch to pickaxe because we know we're coming up. You can ignore the tree behind me. I'll, I'll have to fix that. And then you go straight across. But typically you won't have a tree behind you. That's just for another example. You can see I'm actually taking birch right now, but that's okay because we're we're changing it to regular wood now. And this is actually pretty good timing. Like I said, you, you can make about five to 6,000 overnight. And I'm actually gonna do that tonight. I'm actually, while I'm sleeping, um, I will actually be running this myself just because I need a lot of wood. And I'm, I'm really tired of buying it. I know all of you are tired of trying to find it, but we really need a, a good source of wood. So we might as well. And at the end here, we'll go ahead and break that, replace that. We're gonna drop off, drop off. And we repeat, we repeat the process. See how it's just perfect timing, by the way? That just spawned by the time I dropped off. So I actually have that perfectly timed. And then you're gonna stop your recording and you're just gonna loop it. So that's actually how I like to do this. All right, so now that you know how to do your auto own auto farm, I think that's pretty obvious. If you do need help on how to use Tiny Task or Macro Creator, I'm gonna link the macro video that I created a while back in the description so you can check out those tools. I already made extensive tutorials on how to use those tools and you can find the download links for Tiny Task as well as my Macro Creator there if you'd like. And then over here, I've got obviously this giant berry farm. So you can, you can basically just ride this and then you can just auto click. And if you have a fast enough F key auto clicker, you can actually reach about sometimes, not all the time, you can reach four through. So you can actually reach the very back here. So this is a great auto farm. And the way I set this up, if you can see, I go all the way out here and I do use the same obby little uh, shortcut here, which is nice. So that way I don't actually have to do zigzags or anything like that. Cause I never really run out of space here. And this is a seamless auto loop. So this is an infinite loop for us, the seamless infinite loop. So as soon as I'm at this, this back part, I'm going to drop down and you can see I'm at this bottom layer now. And you could do as many layers as you want. So if you don't want it to be super long, you can actually just make it really tall at this, at the top. So you start at the top, you see my firefly farm. You can do something like that, where you just keep dropping over and over and over like this, totally up to you. And then once I'm done here, say I'm, I've been auto clicking and stuff all the way, then you drop off and then you're going to respawn and you can just keep auto clicking. That way you can pretty much just set up an auto F key clicker or F, F key presser. And you can also just hold down. If, if you have a shortcut for holding down F, then you can just hold this down. And that way you never have to actually even have an auto clicker. So if you just have like maybe a heavy weight or something you could put on the F key, you can just do this where you just hold down F and it'll auto harvest for you. So that's nice because you, you require zero macro for this, right? There's no macro required for doing something like this. The only reason why you need a macro for the trees is because you do need to replant them. And that is a big pain to do. Wood farming is one of the least pleasing and interesting things for me to do in this game. And I'd rather just auto it if I can. I don't want to have to deal with that. So that's why I wanted to share this updated auto farm. I do have an older auto farm that I showed you a while back that requires you to actually move and run. And I would say this is actually much, much better. I would say this replaces the need for that because I don't think this, that old one's very good. I think you're going to get a lot more wood doing this way. And um, it's just cleaner. It's more pleasing to the eye too. Unlike, you know, like a giant auto farm with a bunch of, you know, green blocks and stuff. It, it was just kind of ugly before, but I like this version a lot better. You know, the downside is it does cost a lot of conveyors. You know, it's not very expensive if you think about it. Conveyors are actually really cheap to make. You just have to actually go and find people with enough iron and coal. If you don't have enough, you're going to need to make all those uh, conveyors or find someone that's selling a bunch of conveyors, but they're fun to use anyway. You need conveyors anyway. So go get them. And then you're probably going to be spending about 50,000 for your flag. So just remember, you're going to need about 50,000 coins for that flag. Now you could just do something like this without the flag. If you're like, well, I already spent all my coins and I don't have any more, so I can't do the flag. Then you could also set this up. So like a, a cheap way of doing it is instead of it doing it this way, you could just set it at your spawn. So you could do the, the cheap way would be like this, right? The old fashioned approach would be wherever your spawn is. And then you just do this. And so you go run down here. And then once you drop off, you fall that way and you just keep doing it, right? That's the old way of doing it. So you could still do it that way as well. If you don't have an obby flag, just do it off of your regular spawn. It's not as nice and it's not as clean, but it is it is an approach you can use. I just don't like doing that because I want to, I want a little bit of control of where I place it. You know, I just don't, I, I don't really like this, this spot for it. I like that this is kind of down there and it's clean. And then I also like that I can do this for different types of uh, farms as well. So I could actually have my berry farm. I could have my tree farm and then I could have my honey farm. I could do whatever I want with these, um, had taken this approach and it's just really, really clean to do it this way. One thing I will tell you is because of the changes to the interaction thing, this doesn't work as well. The um, berry bush did get nerfed. So this berry 
berry farm did get nerfed. You can't quite do as many as you yeah, used to be able to. I used to be able to get a lot more of these, but for some reason, I can't seem to get as many anymore. So they did uh, they did patch that recently because they changed the way everything worked as far as interacting with farms and stuff. So because of that, I, can all, I can't always get through it. It's almost like I added a little, they added a little bit of a cooldown to slow down the uh, speed in which you can pick berries, which is nice. So I hope this was helpful for you and your farming of wood because I know I needed, I needed this. I needed to make a farm. So I figured I'd share how I'm doing my farm. So I'm actually going to do that, like I said, overnight. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you are new and I will see you all next time. Take it easy.